Welcome back to my garage. My previous video ended on a rant about my stupidity in using a pitot tube in this setup with a constant blow, no suck engine. My supercharged 50cc two-stroke engine. Deleting that pitot tube is the first thing we're going to try today. And I also said I needed more fuel and I've picked up more fuel. Actually from a Norwegian producer this time. I think they're the only producer of uh, nitro methanol in uh, in the whole of uh, northern Europe so that's kind of cool first let me talk a little bit about a benefit I think is kind of unknown in using a supercharger on a two-stroke engine I'll show you I'm waiting for the coolant to heat up we gotta fill the time with something right so here's the two-stroke cylinder this is the exhaust port and this is the transfer port like really simple and crude spark plug and there's a piston in here, moving up and down. It's not stationary like in this drawing. As you all know, a two-stroke works by transferring mixture from the crankcase, down here, into the combustion chamber, up here. And then the piston compresses that mixture. It combusts, and the combusted mixture, the spent gases, gets expelled out the exhaust and replaced by new fresh mix. You have a fixed area here, and you have a fixed area here. Fixed exhaust area and fixed transfer area. The time these areas are open is variable with RPM. At higher RPM, you get less time. They're open for less time. The piston is moving faster. Less time area. At a certain point in the range, you run out of time for this area to dump out the mixture in here fast enough and drop the pressure in the cylinder to lower than the crankcase. It needs to be lower than the crankcase, otherwise there will be flow in this direction and not in this direction, which is what you want. You will get flow in this direction eventually, but it will get delayed until pressure in the cylinder is lower than pressure in the crankcase. This is where the supercharger comes in. By having a higher pressure down here in the crankcase from the supercharger, the point in the RPM range where it starts getting delayed where you run out of time to expel the spent gases before you open the transfer ports that gets delayed you can rev the engine higher without starting to get reverse flow here also the crankcase is constantly refilled by the supercharger which means the pressure drop when the transfers open will be lower versus without the supercharger which means you will have a more effective transfer time transfer phase high pressure in here when the transfers open starts eating into the time area of the transfer. Piston can travel down to maybe here before there's flow in this direction. And then it helps with higher pressure in the crankcase and more flow, refilling the crankcase while the transfers are transferring. Conclusion in a two stroke, it's not just about pushing more mixture into here. It's also about delaying the point where you have reverse flow from the cylinder into the crankcase to a higher point in the RPM range. And also keeping pressure higher throughout the transfer phase. And these are key points to why supercharging a two-stroke should work. We don't know yet, in this case at least. I'm telling you this because in the car on my way to pick up that fuel, I got this sudden inrush of uh, various different ideas of doing this to make it even more efficient. I think we're going, uh, we're going somewhere else with this. First we'll need to find out how it works without anything, something else. And then, this line goes to the float bowl vents of the carb and the fuel pressure regulator. And it's hooked up to the pitot tube, which is a tube pointing towards the flow inside of the big pressure tube here. Luckily, I've got a fitting on the other side that just tees off from the pressure tube. I'll mount this to the straight fitting and uh, we'll just uh, plug off the pitot tube for now. Until we see how, how it behaves without the pitot tube. If my theories about the pitot tube being a problem is correct. If not, we can reuse the pitot tube. This line is hooked up to a pressure gauge before the crankcase. I've got one in the crankcase and one here. We won't be running this for now. Probably can't see it, there's a hose in the way here. But I'm opening up my additional power jets again. Without that pitot tube, we should get considerably less fuel at high flow and high throttle openings. We'll see.
And probably wondering why I'm sitting here with my cup of coffee, but not drinking. Do you see lifting that cup? That's beneath me now. I'm a lord. You can become a lord and have stuff being beneath you too. Thanks to established titles. Established titles is a fun and novel way to preserve the woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts. Based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds or lords or lady in English. Title packs give you at least one square foot of dedicated land with an unique plot number on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland and an official certificate with a crest. Established titles plant a tree with every order and supports global charities, one tree planted and trees for future. You could officially include the title Lord or Lady on your plane tickets, credit card, etc. First 200 people purchasing a title through my link will effectively be next to my plot, within walking distance. Our own two-stroke stuffing kingdom makes an amazing last-minute gift. Established titles is actually running a massive Black Friday sale now and you'll get an additional 10% off if you use the code two-stroke stuffing. Go to established titles.com slash two stroke stuffing to collect your gifts now and help support the channel. Thank you established titles. We're ready for the first test. Let's see how it behaves now without that bit tow tube. Just a normal pressure takeoff in the tube. Like most weeks my expectations are high for this week. <laughs> Let's hope we can get some results. Finally. First without the retarder hooked up, only the inertia of the system. fuel we'll start turning down the additional power jet I'll start with the lowest one I'll try closing the main one much better we're creeping up on it I can actually give it full throttle now without it dying which means it's uh, it's getting there I'm not sure the carb is too happy we had a backfire and I saw mixture coming out here probably between the two carb halves let's plug in the retarder and start applying some load and see how it behaves I think I now can get the fueling right without that pitot tube. I can give it full throttle and it's not dying. There's lots of backfires and a misfire though. It's still rich to the point where the ignition is probably not coping. I've got this thing so we can uh, monitor ignition while we're running it. The carb is experiencing major issues though. Lots of fuel being pushed out in the split line between the two halves here on both sides. Backfires seem to open up the gap even more and make it leak even worse. 
We'll have to fix this. There's a low pressure area under the slide inside the carb. So fuel is probably not only being pushed out of the carb, but also into the, into the Venturi. We'll need to fix this before we continue testing. I can tell it's running better now from just how much my eyes are burning compared to earlier. Haven't been burning this much since uh, testing with the brute force engine. Obviously more combustion going on and not so much uh, just fuel passing through. Which is a good thing. That's interesting. From the looks of the remains of the sealant used here, it's probably something like this. An epoxy based hard curing sealant type engine sealant, which is great stuff. But in my experience, it holds up fine to gas. I think nitromethane or methanol is a solvent for this stuff. Because even after cured, it'll just break down when exposed to, uh, to methanol and nitromethane. Everything I've ever used this stuff on, be it cylinder halves, exhaust flanges, intake flanges, it has just broken down and started leaking. I think that's our problem. We'll try making a gasket. I'm a little bit concerned about how much clamping force these four tiny screws can provide. Might not be enough for uh, clamping that gasket tightly, but uh, we'll try. It wouldn't be too much work to just model up a new carb and reuse all the, like the float needle, uh, the float bowl, jets, all that stuff, and make it easier to seal. More clamping bolts and sturdier stuff. We'll try with a gasket first and the slide is pretty tight in there. We'll be nice with another 0.3 millimeter clearance, I think. Might cause it to not idle too well though. We'll see. I know a lot of you wants me to go EFI and uh, I must admit it's, uh, it's starting to become more tempting. Even though I know it will bring a lot of complications and troubleshooting. Which is a good thing, but uh, maybe not when you want to get this engine running. Sooner rather than later. It's a rabbit hole. And I really like rabbit holes. And that's the main problem. Cut a little bit too much here. How to... How to redo it. That's better. Luckily there's a fairly thick gasket here, which will take up any misalignment. I'll try just tightening it down and uh, I'll see how well aligned it ends up. It doesn't look too bad. Doesn't look bad at all. And this is not a machine surface, it's the cast surface. It's a little bit uneven. Should be fine. We'll see. Hopefully that gasket is compressed enough and will stay in place. We'll see. I really need to find some small imperial allen head screws and replace these. I hate uh, Phillips head screws. I guess they're great for not stripping threads. They are great for stripping heads though. It's morning the day after I put that gasket in the carb. I ran out of time. I'm gonna open all my power jets again in case this made the carb much leaner at a higher RPM as it's no longer spewing fuel everywhere. And I've got a camera on the other side of the car to check for leaks.
On the plus side, it seemed to not be leaking so much fuel between the castings into the actual bore of the carb, making it richer. Almost ran at full throttle with all the power jets open. When I pinched this line, disabled that one power jet, it seemed to be clearing up. But it was leaking a lot out of the carb. Worse than before. I don't think there's enough clamping force from these four small bolts. And the span between them is fairly long to fail. We'll have to take it apart again and inspect. See what we can uh, figure out here. I'm at a crossroad now. I really feel I'm close to getting this carb to work as I want it to. If only I can fix that leak. It wouldn't be too much work designing and uh, machining uh, a new carb based on the slide and the bowl and uh, all that stuff from this carb. And tailor it to my needs. Like I don't need all these vent lines. I can do an internal vent and then have just one line to hook up to the to the pressure tube and pressure regulator. And I can make everything a little bit wider, make it easier to seal. But I don't need this choke circuit, I could remove that. I haven't got the necessary raw stock to do this though, so I would have to drive and pick up some and uh, or order. Both ways would at least take me one day, maybe two. I thought I could machine an o-ring groove here. There's room, except for where that choke passage is. A solution I'm confident will work is JB Weld. And I think I'm gonna do that. Will mean we won't be able to take the carb apart again. We shouldn't have to though. Most carbs you can't split like this anyway. I'm trying to post a video at least once a week. This is Thursday. If I JB Weld this now, let it cure while I'm inside editing. And tomorrow morning we assemble and maybe we can uh, Maybe this video can end on a success this time. Maybe. Let's do that. Editing. Testing tomorrow. Seems like with every leak we fix, we introduce a new one. And now it's the main power jet that's leaking. You can't really fault Lectron. This car wasn't meant for blow-through applications. This video is turning into how to make your Lectron work in a blow-through application though. So that's a good thing. And the engine is running better, even better than before. Better and better. Definition of the definition of progress. Let's see what we can do about that leaking power jet. Well, that doesn't seem right. Maybe I've tightened this too much earlier. Another human error. I've tightened this too much and the needle jammed in the taper. Without that needle in there, I have no control over this. So that's why I'm installing this inline, inline needle valve meant for remote throttle. Who's curious to see what will start leaking next?
better and it's not leaking still too much fuel at full throttle misfires backfires thing is i'm running 30 percent by weight nitromethane and the plan is to run much more than that like 50 60 percent as soon as i get that nitromethane license they said they would get back to me this week haven't heard anything yet with twice the amount of nitro too rich might not be so rich anymore i know the problem with the needle at the fully open position we're talking like maybe a four millimeter jet in there and a four millimeter jet that's too much even for this like 2.5 3 would be okay probably but four might not be so wrong with uh 60 nitro or more see you next time